But it's time now for Uncancelled. And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. Now, the Australian media is in full swing without defending men's champion Novak Djokovic after the tennis star turned freedom fighter was booted out of the country for refusing to bow to their COVID tyranny. Djokovic arrived back in Serbia yesterday after his visa was cancelled following a seesaw legal row with the Australian government over his vaccine status. But while he lost the battle, the saga is forcing people to wake up to the war being waged on liberty. In fact, I would say the pandemic, and I've covered Australia very closely throughout this pandemic, seems to have emboldened the police there so much that they've actually become downright authoritarian. Just look at the England cricket team trying to have a drink at their hotel. Uh, uh, We've got uh, Nathan Lyon, Yeah, yeah. Ruth, so uh, Carrie, no, 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 and Anderson. Thank you. Well, we just video this, no, just no, for no, the lawyers. They're at it again. But with me now, Australian lawyer and columnist Helen Dale. Helen, what does the treatment of Djokovic say about Australia in the COVID world? This is independent of COVID. As I've said on a number of outlets and uh, across the spectrum, I am now the go-to person for explaining Australia. (laughs) People have or perhaps had this image of Australia as a liberty-loving country. They tend to see it, foreigners often do, as being a bit like the United States. It could not be more different. In fact, if you were going to pick two countries, Anglosphere countries that are not at all alike, it would be Australia and the United States. They're just not at all alike. Their historical and political traditions are completely different. And as I've said on other outlets, but I'll repeat it here, policing in Australia, going right back to the early days of settlement, has always had more in common with what British people who have traveled there will be familiar familiar with this, um, would associate with the gendarmerie in France. They're armed. They're not like British police. Australian police are armed and they will, in certain circumstances, like you saw in the protests in France with the gilets jaunes, you will see uh, them in the, that they call them the black pyjamas, Australians refer to them with it. They sort of look a bit silky. Um, and it, it's like the SWAT, it's the SWAT teams, the drug squad. And I can remember when I was working in, in Canberra for an Australian politician who incidentally was civil libertarian and got absolutely nowhere with trying to change this, this kind of police culture. I can remember when they took a set against a particular football team in Sydney. And the, the name of the team was the Western Sydney Wanderers. And I and I cannot understand why. There were several football teams around New South Wales. This is football, round ball football. It wasn't rugby ball. It's the same kind of football as you play here. Yeah, and they, they just call took it a set soccer. against this <laughs> Yeah, they call it soccer in Australia, but they took a set against this particular team and you would have <coughs> the stadium where the Wanderers played being ringed by police, all done up in SWAT gear. And that was in 2015. This is not a new phenomenon. Okay, but where COVID, I guess, has changed things is that Australia seems to revel in its status as some sort of hermit kingdom uh, because folk aren't allowed out, folk aren't allowed in, and doesn't matter how famous Djokovic is, uh, he didn't follow the rules. Uh, And as you point out, it's... Very, very popular. Incredibly popular, actually. I would say Scott Morrison, the Australian Prime Minister, probably had no choice but to get rid of the bloke. There is a, 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 an argument to be made, and I have seen this made by a number of journalists across the spectrum. I, I mean, I watched some footage from Australia. I saw a woman from The Guardian saying it, and I saw Rita Panahi from Sky U News, which in Australia is closer politically to, say, GB News here. And both of them said Morrison's behaviour with uh, deporting Djokovic was incredibly poll driven. And I think Panahi made the remark, she said, it's almost as if the country is being run by focus groups. Yeah, which is very depressing. Mm. Do you think this is going to impact Australia's international reputation, though? Because it doesn't look like a welcoming place anymore, Alan Dale. I think what you've got now is more people are aware that it is a very, very different country and it runs itself very differently, particularly from the US. Now, the US is not the sort of major source of our our tourists. The majority come from the 
closer countries around us and also from China. And of course, China is very authoritarian, far more so than Australia. But one thing, this specific treatment of, of Djokovic reveals is this deeply Australian sense that is built into the border control politics of the country. Uh, we will decide who comes here and the circumstances in which they what come. What about protests too, Helen? Because protests against these incredibly strict COVID policies have been cracked down on by Aussie police with, 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 with violence. It feels like if you go against oh, the orthodoxy shocking. in any way. It was shocking in Victoria. The Victorian police are yeah. notoriously, have become notoriously the worst in the country. Victoria had by far the worst lockdowns in Australia. That's the other thing to remember. It is a federal system. Each state is very different. Yeah, 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 so yeah. when you, so you like the United States, huge difference between New York and Florida or California and Arizona, you know, just completely different. Australia is the same. Melbourne had the longest lockdown of any city in the developed world. There are other major cities and parts of Australia that have had no lockdowns or three days total. So yeah. this is the other thing. The okay. federalism complicates well, no, and, and, and the picture. Thank you. Thank you, Helen Dale. It's been absolutely fascinating because I think you're explaining that there is a real historic context to what we've been seeing in Australia, both in terms of Djokovic and COVID. But I have to say, it's a country I love. It's a country I've got lots of relatives in, but I'm very angry. Uh, if I can Australia make just doing. one tiny point yeah, before I go. You know how we've had these parties in Downing Street mm. and the, the, the powers that be not following the rules that they imposed on the rest of us? The Australian cultural value that nobody gets to be exceptional, including Novak Djokovic, who cut down the tall poppy, means the closest that any political leader has come in Australia to breaking the rules that they imposed on the Australian people was that at one point, Dan Andrews went on a holiday at the wrong time. Wow. So yeah. that is they the knew. essence of the cultural they difference. Knew. No, it's fascinating stuff. Helen Dale, thank you so much for explaining to us uh, to, to us tonight.